Uh, give me one minute. I'm going to try to locate this particular verse. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Okay. I'm not sure where it is. Um, let's see, we're getting closer. Hmm, yeah, so we'll find it. Okay.
Okay, 11.541. Okay, Guru Maharaj, thank you. 11.541. Yep. <laughs> Devarsi Putapta near Nam Pitrinam Nakinkaro Nayam Rani Chirajan Sarvatmanam Ya Sharanam Saranyam Gato Mukundam Dirikti Kartum O king, one who has given up all material duties and is taking full shelter of the lotus feet of Mukunda, who offers shelter to all, is not indebted to the demigods, great sages, ordinary living beings, relatives, friends, mankind, or even forefathers who have passed away. Since all such classes of living entities are parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord, one who has surrendered to the Lord's service has no need to serve such persons separately. One who has not fully surrendered to the devotional service of the Lord in reality has many material duties to perform. <clears throat> Even ordinary conditions sold as the recipient of innumerable benefits given by the demigods provide sun and moonshine, rain, wind, food, and ultimately one's own body. <coughs> In the Bhagavad Gita is stated, Stena Eva Sta. Stena Eva Sta. One who does not reciprocate with the demigods by offering them sacrifice is Stena or a thief. Similarly, other living entities such as cows have provided us with innumerable delicious and nutritious foodstuffs. When we wake up to them in the morning, our mind is refreshed by the sweet singing of birds, and on a hot day, we enjoy the cool shade and breeze of the forest trees. We are accepting service from innumerable living entities, and we are obligated to repay them. Opta means one's own family members to whom one is certainly obligated according to the normal morality. And nirnam means human society. <clears throat> Until one becomes a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one is certainly a product of his society. We receive mundane education, culture, tradition, protection from the society in which we live in. And thus we owe a great debt to society. Of course, our debt to society is not simply to the present order, but to all forefathers and ancestors who carefully preserve moral and social customs so that we, their descendants, could live peacefully. Therefore, the word patrinam, or forefathers, indicates our debt to previous generations. Okay, so what it's saying here is that... Uh, It's not like when you come into this world, you know, you have, you're free. Automatically you take birth, you're provided with so many things. You're provided with food, fresh air, at least in theory, water, and you're given instructions by great sages, you're given some kind of guidance materially, politically by the society. All these things come by way of taking birth in this world. And there is a duty that's attached to that. All of these different amenities that we receive, including the relationships we develop are all part of our karmic uh, quandary or connection. Therefore, 
our mothers and fathers give us our body. We're indebted to them. Society gives us certain benefits to live. We're indebted to them. The sages give us knowledge, scriptural knowledge. We're indebted to them. Demigods provide material benefits such as the elements that we need to live in this world. We're indebted to them. So there is many debts that come by accepting a material body upon entering into this material world. But here, this verse is interesting. Unless when one surrenders to the Lord, all of these debts are automatically paid. And there's a reason for why, because the Lord is the foundation or the connection to everything. And therefore, um, we have to either pay the debts or we have to get uh, put into a restrictive environment. In other words, we have to be, we have to be punished for not paying the debts. Western countries, people are not familiar with this. And therefore they go on like everything is free. Prabhupada would always use the example. You're getting sunlight and you're also getting, you're getting heat, you're getting light, you're getting some elements such as electricity, but we're not paying anything. We're not doing anything. And therefore there is a karmic account that's being compounded. And once we sort of be attached to the karmic account, then we find ourselves becoming more and more entangled. Therefore, because Krishna is mula, mula means root, he's the root of everything, the foundation of everything. Everything comes from him, Ishwar Parma Krishna, Satchitananda Vigraha, Anadi Radhi, Govinda, Sarvanakara, Nakarna. Everything is maintained by him. He's maintaining everything. He says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhupada. I'm not only creating everything, I'm maintaining it. And when it's time, he manifests himself as the destroying agent also of the material energy. So Krishna, or Vishnu, we should say Vishnu, he plays the role of all three. And it's just, it's just a bit. So what to do, take the devotional service. Now, we sometimes we find ourselves still connected to various external situations and persons, which cause us to, to have some obligation to those things. But that is simply um, a responsibility that we have, we have accepted. But in the long run, as long as one is engaging in devotional service, they are free from anything of the material energy. Although they may be apparently in the material energy, devotional service is transcendental to the material energy. It is on the liberated platform. So one who's connected with the Lord through the process of devotion to the Lord, they get to experience uh, Krishna, rather than the debts that come by way of um, material birth in this world. So 
the solution is to engage in devotional service and not think that they have no, and as long as there is a debt, karmic debt, there is another verse. So you'll see that a lot of times devotees will change their mind and uh, engage in activities that are material, thinking that they're responsible for all these things. Uh, sometimes we see that a boy or a young girl, they're still going to school and they want to become a devotee, so they're, they want to give up their school. And their parents are always telling them, no, no, don't give up your school. Okay, so these are some of the things that we, let's go down to the next uh, paragraph. In fact, the members of the Krishna, Krishna Conscious Society are sometimes criticized by materialistic persons and because we give too much attention to Krishna rather than working to fulfill all the above mentioned obligations. Replying to this, the Bhagavad says, Yata toyor mula nishe shachena triptanti satskana bujo basaka. If one waters the root of the tree automatically, the branches, twigs, leaves, etc., become nourished, there is no need nor any effectiveness in separatingly pouring water on the branches, twigs, and trees. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Guru Maharaj. Okay, any any questions or comments? <laughs> yes. 
devotees, if you have any questions, comments, or realizations, please uh, unmute yourself and ask. Or you can leave a message in the back. Uh, the, the, main, the main thing is devotional service is all parading and all sweeping. Any material obligations is not required as long as one is engaging in devotional service. Now, there might be some exceptions to that. So we can see in the, in the discussion period, is there any exceptions and how do the exceptions fit into the larger picture? So... I'll wait for questions.